What's up guys, Alberto Big Boost here. Today we're gonna address a steering issue that my E36 developed on the last drift event. I've been running a SLR Ultra Angle Kit on my E36 for about three years now. No issues yet until now that I'm making a lot of power and obviously parts wear and tear, especially like racing parts like this Angle Kit that has spherical bearings instead of rubber bushings. They tend to wear after a few races and so Mine lasted about three years. It's finally time to refresh it because I have some like pretty bad wheel wobble that I was experimenting on the track that you can see on this clip. So I call up SLR after a couple minutes with them on the phone. They sent me a care package with a full bearing kit to rebuild my angle kit and have brand new bearings and no more play on my front end. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild your angle kit on this video. All right guys, so I have the wheels off and this is what I was talking about. You should not have this play. So we have worn out tie rod, worn out ball joint. I might just replace this ball joint too since uh, I have the kit. And then we're also going to replace this little bushing back here as well from the lollipop. So we have all the parts that we're going to replace, so I have the ball joints, I have the tie rod ends, they have this new shorter sleeve for the ball joint, so it's able to thread the knot a little bit further into the stud, got some new knots for the lower ball joints, got the sleeves for the lollipops, and then we're going to be using a 24 millimeter socket, 22, and a 19. And then we're gonna be using a 13 for the sway bar link. I'm going to start by removing the sway bar link first. Get that out of the way because I might forget then it becomes really difficult to remove afterwards. So let's go ahead and take a care of that first. 13 millimeter socket on one side, 13 millimeter wrench on the other side, and it comes right off. Then I'm gonna use the 17 millimeter socket. I'm gonna remove the two bolts holding the lollipop in. Then I can remove the lower ball joint or inner ball joint. That's a 22. And then the outer one here is 24. You slide everything out. Somewhat. It seems this ball joint is extremely loose. There's all that play. The inside one, even though it's dirtier, maybe by having old M50 oil landing on it, it kept it well lubricated and it didn't wear, but I'm still replacing it regardless. And then we have this little black bushing here that I was going to have to remove. I'm probably going to try to like polish this part again so it slides in and out easier. So let's take care of this thing somehow. It's going to pull this out of there, maybe yank it or break it or something. Next minute. Now we have to remove this snap ring. Oh, we just use this snap ring plier. Take this off real quick. Now we can press the bushing out. With this ball joint remover tool, we should be able to remove it real easy, hopefully. Let's see if it actually cooperates and comes off without putting too much of a fight. I guess it's putting a lot of a fight. Here we have the old ball joints compared to a brand new one. The new one is so hard and 
tight tolerance that I can't even get this to straighten up by hand. And this ones will, they basically dance, especially this one. No, there's that. This is a really loose one. I really wanted to re powder coat the arms, but I don't have time for that right now since I have to go to an event tomorrow and I have to drive in an hour and a half. So I want to make sure that my car actually gets there one piece by replacing these parts now. So I'm going to go ahead and press this back in. Since I don't actually have a press, I'm going to be using device. And with device, I'm going to be able to press it more than halfway in. And then I'm going to finish the job with the clamp. I actually found an even easier way to do this with a 24 millimeter socket. Check this out. By hand. No issues whatsoever. I'm a human press. Perfect. Now we just need to reinstall the sear clip to hold everything securely in place. There. And we'll do the outside one real quick. Done. For the lollipop, I went ahead and I applied some Permatex Ceramic Extreme Bright Part Lubricant into there. So it's lubricated here, it doesn't squeal anymore. I'm also going to apply some of this stuff here. So it has a resistance or a lot of pressure. It lubricates for a long time and hopefully resists some water and weather damage there. Since I know a lollipop is going to be the hardest thing to realign back in the suspension, I'm going to go ahead and install that first. Center this right here. Probably um, in the way of the camera with my hand right now. Now for this ball joint, Sean sent me this new smaller revised insert compared to the old one it's a lot shorter that way this should go in and the bushing in there and then it allows more threads for them not to grab onto now we can tighten the inner ball joint or the subframe one And of course, reinstall the sway bar link. Then to finish this side, we still have to replace the outer tie rod. Alright, made it to Daytona. Been here for about two hours. Car is really packed. After replacing the heim joints on the SLR kit, the car runs so much better. Wow, it feels like driving a new car on brand new tires, even though my front tires are actually extremely worn out. The car feels amazing. It was a night and day difference. Thank you SLR for sending me the parts that I needed to get my car fixed. It runs great. Well, it's a uh, very loud music going on here, so I'm gonna get a bunch of B-rolls of the cars and hopefully you guys like what I do with it.